Okay, here I'm going to cover some basic plant tissue types. You see here we've already talked about uh, some phloem, some vascular bundles, so the epidermis may sound familiar, but we're going to just go over some specific ones uh, for plants. So there's three main types. Most plants have these three main types. What we call ground tissue, in which the vascular tissue is embedded, dermal tissue, which is the outer protective covering of the plant, and vascular tissue, which conducts water and dissolved minerals of the plant, conducts products of the photosynthetic process through the plant. So we can see them here, our xylem and our phloem, right, part of our vascular tissue, the dermal tissue, like the epidermis, and the ground tissue is this middle portion here, and this is a cross-section of a plant's stem. So three kinds of plant ground tissues. So we break that down a little bit further. And this is a great little summary here. We've already talked about um, phloem and xylem. Now we'll look at some of these other um, types here. So parenchyma cells, they're alive at maturity and they carry out the basic functions of living, of, of living including the process of photosynthesis, cellular respiration, and food and water storage. They have a very thin cell wall. And these are the parenchyma cells relocated down here. And you see they're unspecialized cells that carry out most of the plant's metabolisms here. Moving on, we also have calenchyma cells, as indicated here. They're also living at maturity, and they provide much support to the plant's organs, which secondary growth has not occurred. Uneven thickening of the cell wall, I see some are thicker, some are thinner regions. Uh, the wall thickened with pectin and cellulose, so, but it's uneven in our calenchyma cells. They also function in support, um, even though they are living. The last one, I'm going to myself out of the way here, are sclerenchyma cells. They usually do not contain living cytoplasm when mature, and they have tough cell walls and secondary cell walls. We see the image here. Even thickening of the cell wall, and the walls thickened with lignin. So sclerenchyma are mainly consisting of dead cells that have primary and secondary uh, cell walls, which provide support. So we could see our sclerenchyma very thick, calenchyma very uneven, and parenchyma containing kind of those chloroplasts there. Moving on, then our uh, dermal tissue, the flattened epidermal cells, are the most abundant cells in the plant's outer layer or epidermis. The epidermis is often covered in a waxy layer called the cuticle, and that's a barrier against water loss. So here's our cuticle, here's our upper epidermis. Remember, we don't want our plants to dehydrate and burn, so they have this protective layer. Cuticle, you can kind of think of like your nails, the cuticle on your nails uh, provides protection. Same thing for here, but in plants, they don't want to lose water randomly through their leaves. They want to control their water loss through their stomata here. Lastly, the vascular tissue is responsible for conducting water and dissolved minerals up the plant, conducts products of the photosynthetic process throughout the plant. Uh, this is a roundabout way of saying xylem and phloem are two examples. Remember, xylem is taking water absorbed in the roots and sending it to the shoots, and phloem can move from the shoots to the roots, the roots to the shoots, wherever it's basically needed. It's transporting sugars. Um, typically, our leaves are our main sources, and this flower could be producing petals or fruit, and that might need sugar, so nutrients from this leaf could be coming up to here. These roots could also be actively growing, and some sugars could be sent down that way too. So hopefully that was a quick overview of some plant types. Take a minute, might want to, in particular, go over, review this slide to be able to compare these different types of ground tissues.